Guys, in this video, we're gonna talk about got to learn. In here, you'll find high quality how-to guides that'll teach you how to fix your own plumbing at home to save money. The Ultimate Plumbing Tricks Bible. Now I'll tell you what, this is probably their most popular video. I love looking at it because this is where he takes time to teach you tips and tricks from kind of behind the scenes. This is what happens on a job site every day that the really good plumbers know and get and understand and new plumbers they look at somebody and they're like, man, what are you doing? They don't understand the why. Now, hang around to the end because he does a trick that I got to tell you, I hadn't even figured out, but I definitely want to learn. So let's check the video out and let's check it out right now. Okay, so putting Teflon tape on like this, as you see, he's up against the wall. And when he's up against the wall like that, you really can't get right there where he's at you really can't get a whole roll of Teflon behind it. Now there's two things to do, and I'm gonna kind of give you my little play on it as we go. What I do is I will actually pull the roll out sideways, stick my finger behind it, loop the roll down behind it, and pull my finger up behind it like he does the pencil, and just guide the tape where it goes. Now, don't get me wrong, I've done this too when it gets into an area so tight that maybe I can't get my fat finger in, but I gotta tell you, this is good and just the trick is, make sure you get enough Teflon tape on your pen or whatever you're using. That way you get all your wraps all the way around. This is really a good tip and trick to know though. This is one I gotta tell you, this is normally a mistake I don't make. I make sure to measure and know what size hole I need beforehand, but this is a neat tip and trick. I like the way he says, put the other one on the inside, that way you're lined up right where you need to be. Basically, you're using the first bit as your pilot bit now, and that actually works out really, really well. Yeah, see the way he's doing it? That is really good. Now this is something that I learned whenever I got into the union. And I think it's neat because I really did not know that beforehand. But like he said, and this is one thing I learned in the union, you multiply by 1.41. Now, how anal retentive are you? How critical do you wanna be? If you wanna get down further, it's even 1.414. Here's the deal, this works. Now don't get me wrong, we've all seen that stovepipe plumber, you know, holding up two fittings, holding the tape measure, doing this. Man, I used to be that guy, I completely get it. But when you learn about the different formulas to do a 45 degree offset, the 22 and a half, anything like that, these are all things that can help you work smarter, not harder. And make sure you subtract your makeup. Now this is another good one right here. Yeah, take your adjustable wrench, put it in there, set it to the right pipe size. So set it further back then bring it up there, get to where you can work it around, it will round it out really, really well. Now that's something too I've done before. Another thing too is if you glue it on and you realize within an hour or two that you glued the wrong piece in or you had the wrong measurement, you can even take, and he uses something later, I think is where he uses a belt. You can actually take a pipe wrench and put it in there and apply pressure. You're not trying to do a hard break on it. You're actually just trying to apply enough pressure that it starts to twist it. All that glue is not completely cured up. And I've literally pulled apart a joint that I think we glued like six hours earlier. This was a long time ago, back when I used to make mistakes, you know. Okay, so he asked right there, have you ever used a shark bite fitting before? The answer is no. Okay, so I've had to go take them off before. So what he shows here actually really does work. Now, I like this, he's from Canada. Take the wrench and whack it a few times. I love that. Now that works good. Anytime that we cut all thread rod, normally we've got a pipe vise, a tripod around, something like that. So what we will do is we will actually lock it in there and use that. It'll help you get it a little straighter, get it a little neater. It's a good trick to know though. If putting an offset in a rod, doing it right, really does look good. And now, I'm gonna give you another 
tip and trick here. If you'll take your nut and run it down the all thread first, then do your cut, then when you go to unscrew that nut, it'll straighten all those threads back out for you. That's a trick that really works well. Now see, my only thing right here, he says, if you do a lot of underground plumbing, maybe he means it different, but where I like these the best, maybe where pipes are flush coming up out of the ground for a toilet, and I wanna cut it off flush with the concrete, that to me is the best spot for these. So maybe that's what he means, underground plumbing, when it's coming up out of the ground. I love these though. I don't use a handmade one. I actually get mine from Tiger Fish Tools, and they're diamond plated, and I love those things. Yeah, that's a cool thing. Now guys, that's one thing that works really, really well too. And you don't wanna crimp your piece too hard. You just wanna crimp the 90, not the pipe. But also, I bring mine up at an angle and crimp it. That way, whenever I turn it, I can guide it right down to where I want it, put the level on it, make sure everything is square. And it works great. And I guess I'm lucky because I learned to mark my pipe like this whenever I first started plumbing. Now this is funny. Don't get me wrong. I love that tip, I love that trick, but here's the thing. Be careful. Don't let your pieces of rod or pipe fall on the ground. Those are trip hazards and can really hurt somebody. Now, me, maybe that's why I have a bad back and bad knees. I just bend over and pick the stuff up. This is another good trick. You know that I use that Raptor aircraft grade aluminum level. I love it because you can set it flush on top of the pipe and it does like he's talking about, gives you different views. This is another one that I figured out a long time ago. As long as your pipe is the exact same size, it's perfect and it works good. Now, this is another one that's good to know. It's a good safety thing. It'll keep that wrench from jumping and hitting you really hard. Now, do me a favor and leave me a comment down below if any of y'all have ever used a tape measure to support your pipe. It's so funny because we had things set up in here one day. We had a jig where we were, I don't know if we were soldering or seal flossing, but I actually pulled out my tape measure and built it up that way it took the coupling and brought it up level where it was nice and straight. And one of the guys in the comments says, oh my God, I love the video and I love that you did that. I've never thought of that. I gotta tell you, this is another one I've been doing for years. Okay, now this is another one I talked about earlier on the fitting. If you've glued it in, maybe you don't have a belt on. Look, I don't, I don't wear a belt, but I know that I can take a pipe wrench and gently twist it to help pull that out. Now he says if you've glued in the wrong size pipe, my thing is, if it's too long, measure it, cut it off. That's if you've glued in too short of a pipe. Again, this is another one that I like but I always know what size hole I need to make before I drill them. Absolutely. Now, my thing there is, if you're sticking in this position, you probably don't need to squeeze the ring, but I do see some reasons where maybe you're sliding your ring up different things, but man, anything you can do to get it to hold in place right where you want it, fantastic. And don't put Teflon tape on the wrong way. Y'all see my video, how to put Teflon tape on. Whatever you do, don't do it the wrong way. It can cause leaks. One thing I wanna back up and show you right here. Look at this crack right here in this valve. That's not very good. I say valve, that may be a T. Either way, when you can see a crack, don't use that fitting. This is another good one too, but you can also order couplings 
less stop means there's no stop in there at all. Sometimes the all thread rod's not quite enough to get it all out, but I'm telling you, those work. Now, I've never used mason record like this, but I have used the saw cutters like that. Wires work great. And this is a neat trick. I've done this on the side of a toolbox before. You notice that's not a very big pipe wrench. That's cool. I knew this one. More leverage. Okay, I'm gonna tell you, I've never done this where he takes the copper and hammers it on the nut, but I'll tell you one thing that I have done. Right here, if you know the nut's going right down here, what I have done is press the back of the socket wrench, slid the socket out, stuck the socket in, and a lot of times you can take that wrench and stick it in there enough that it'll grab it and turn it. It may not be all the way into where it locks, but it'll give you an extra half inch or so. Sometimes, <laughs> sometimes an extra half inch is all she needs. Yeah, I've never done this. Now, this is a ni nice little trick. I've done it, but I've always cut mine a lot shorter just to make sure it'll cut whatever I need to cut. Those blades are a lot flimsier and they can be very dangerous. Now here he's talking about the solder joint too, and this is a good trick. Here's my thing on solder joints. They don't have to look perfect and beautiful. They have to hold water all the time. And, and, and that's why here, I'm gonna back up just a hair. Uh, maybe a hair more. Okay, so now you see this cold joint, that solder is not drawn up in there and he quits right here. Now, I've seen work that he does, so I know he didn't leave it. But guys, don't don't ever leave a piece of solder like that where you can tell it's not adhered to the adapter, it's not adhered to the pipe, that's a cold joint, and that is gonna leak. Yeah. Heat it up. Again, no, I don't use shark bite fittings, but I do repair them a lot. Okay, now I gotta tell you, out of my whole video, I like all his tips and tricks. He definitely knows what he's doing and he makes it very entertaining. That's why I really do, I enjoy this channel. But I gotta tell you, he got me here because I have no idea how in the heck he figured this one out. It's actually pretty cool. But I've got one I'm working on too to show y'all because I believe in the presentation. I believe in making it look like you are the very best person at what you do and you take pride in every single thing you do. So I love when he does things like that. Now remember, the two different things that I do maybe just a little bit different are whenever I'm bending rod to make an offset, I love using my tripod. I love having it clamped down, that way it's sturdy. I can put a level on it, check, make sure everything is perfect because no matter what, at the end of the day, I want it to look great. The other thing is, if you don't have a pen or pencil with you, you can always take your Teflon tape, get it lined out, put your finger there and wrap it around to get it to go right where you want it to go. A lot of these things, guys, it takes time, it takes practice. It takes you perfecting everything you do every single day. But Got to Learn has got a great channel. I love going over there and watching sometimes just to see what they're doing, maybe a little bit different. Hope you enjoyed this. I'm Roger Wakefield, Lead AP, the expert plumber. I'll see you in the next video if you don't get flushed.